Hey everyone, today we are back with another video and this video is about Loom. Now, Loom is essentially an app that allows you to record both your face and your screen at the same time. And what it does is it creates these videos that are kind of like a nice little lecture because again, the students can see your face talking to them, but they can also see your screen as well. So if you wanna show them a PowerPoint presentation or if you wanna write some sort of notes for them or just do some sort of lecture, you can make a video like that. So in any case, the first thing you're gonna to need to do to get Loom is simply download it, right? So like most of our apps, you're gonna to have to go to self-service, click on it, and Loom, of course, is in here somewhere. It'll be in the L category, there it is. And you're gonna to have to hit install. Mine says reinstall, because I already installed it, but you're gonna to have to install it. And once you install it, it will show up right here. And it's this little pinwheel logo, or maybe it's a rose, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm gonna keep calling it a pinwheel. And we're gonna click on it. And one thing I wanna point out is that it shows up in the corner, the top right corner here, again, that same pinwheel logo, and just kinda of get used to it, cause you're gonna see it a lot. Whenever Loom is working, you'll see it in the top right corner. And the first thing it's gonna need you to do is sign in. So hopefully you're used to clicking sign in with Google. Please click sign in with Google. That's the approach you should take. And it will ask you to log in. It will ask you to put in your district email address or maybe your password. And then, hey, there I am. I'm in the bottom right corner and we are in Loom. So the first thing you are going to see in Loom is just this menu right here. And that's where most of Loom is. It's gonna give you immediate options to record a video, okay? It tells you you can record a video that is the screen and the cam. In other words, the whole screen with also the camera down here. It tells you that you can record the screen alone. So if you don't wanna show your face for whatever reason, you can just record your screen. And then you could also, if you want, record just your camera, in other words, if you choose this option, it will record just your face and nothing else. I think the best option is screen and cam because again, you can like lecture or do some sort of lesson, but they can also see your face in the video. When you choose these options, in this case, screen and cam, it gives you even more options. So it says, first off, do you wanna record the full screen? In other words, do you wanna record the entire screen? Um, so that's an option. Another option is to record a certain window. In other words, let's say you don't wanna record the whole screen. Maybe you just wanna record like your PowerPoint app because you wanna show them a PowerPoint. So you can choose to just focus on a certain window, QuickTime or Chrome or whatever you want. And the other option is you can choose a custom size, which basically allows you to make a square or a rectangle on the screen, and that will be the only area that it records. So maybe you have just a certain object here that you wanna record. It will only record that area and how nice, it puts your face still right in the bottom left-hand corner. And you can start recording if you press this red button, but we're not gonna do that just yet. Again, to reopen it, we are gonna to go to the top right. Again, that pinwheel button, there it is. And let's say for the sake of this video that I wanna record my entire screen and I do want screen and cam. In other words, I wanna record the screen, but I also wanna record down here my camera. There are still a couple more options, okay? So if I float down to the left to my face, you'll see that there are some options here. So if I hit the X button, it gets rid of my face and I gotta click up here to put it back. So again, if you wanna get rid of your camera, you can do that. If you wanna change the size, if you wanna pick the bigger circle, for example, guess what, click it, and it makes your face big, crazy. But I want it small, because I don't wanna take up so much of my screen with my face. Um, another option, if you click this kind of square outline, is that it will make you huge. You probably don't wanna do that, but maybe you do. I'm gonna hit the uh, little circle to bring me back small again. And then another option is this little person down here in the bottom left, and it will get rid of your face and it will switch you to your profile picture. Uh, if for whatever reason you don't wanna show your face, but you wanna show your profile picture, you can do that. But if you hit that same camera button again, it'll bring my face back. 
And again, I think the coolest feature is to show your face because that way you can kind of uh, let students see you in these videos, but it's your call. So that is the options, or those are the options available for the little circle in the bottom left. Now, for the sake of this video, before I record anything, I just wanna show you a couple more things. So up in the top right, hopefully you can see it up here, there are these three dots in the top right, and I'm gonna click on it. And that will give you some options, and like most other apps that will allow you to adjust some stuff. So if you click preferences, you're gonna get a lot of options in here. And in all honesty, you probably don't even need to mess with most of them. But if you're really uh, specific or picky, you can change the countdown, you can flip the camera, you can change the audio settings. If you go to shortcuts, you can also make keyboard shortcuts and then you can click here to see your account. But again, these are probably settings that you don't need to change very much if you're not super picky. And then of course there's sign out, there's quit, and most of the other things are not very important for us. So right now we are going to make a video. So I have it set to full screen. I have my camera in the bottom left corner. Let's get going. Let's start recording our Loom. So that was a countdown. Hopefully you saw that, but in most cases it will give you a countdown, a three, two, one, and then it will start recording. So it gives you a chance to kind of get it together. Right now it's recording my entire screen. So what you probably want to do for a Loom video is maybe have a PowerPoint open. So if I wanted to lecture to my students, I could be going through a PowerPoint. I could be explaining things to them. You could do a Google Slides. You can do anything, really. Anything that you can show up on your screen, you can make a video of. I wanna bring your attention, though, to the left-hand side because there are some icons here, and the icons only show up when you put your mouse to the left-hand side of the screen. So uh, right here, you'll see a red square, and that's simply to stop the recording. Pretty straightforward. Right here, there's a little arrow and it allows you to restart your video. So let's say you're like lecturing and you're in the zone and then you say something incorrectly and you need to you know, start the video over. Uh, this restart button just allows you to completely restart the video over. It's a quick click and then the video just starts over and you start recording again. Right here is a pause button. It pauses your recording. If you need to you know, go set something aside and come back, hit the pause button. Of course, there's a little trash can icon if you wanna get rid of the video altogether, it wasn't good, get rid of it. And then I wanna draw your attention to this draw button because this is pretty cool. It's basically a kind of like a marker or a laser pointer. So you can of course change the color and then how thick the marker is. And now if I hit my stop recording button, it'll take a second to load, but it will bring you to your video. Basically, it just recorded everything that we did. It allows you to do a couple things. First off, it allows you to change the speed of your video. If you want to make it go like super fast, you can make it two times. You probably don't want to do this. You'll end up like sounding like a chipmunk. It'll be super weird. But if you're into it, you could totally do that. You can hit play, of course, to watch the video. That's the video I just recorded. And there are also a lot of options here. So right now, just to be clear, we have a completed video. We just recorded a Loom video. And if you are happy with it the way it is, you can go right here in the top right, copy the link, send it to your kids, put it on Google Classroom, do whatever you want. And if you're happy with the video, that's all you need to do. You can just give your students the link. Uh, here you can also change the privacy of the link. So it's by default set at only people with the link can see your video. That's probably what you want it to be. Now there are also a lot of options here for other things. So for example, right now it says doc doc. I don't know what that means, but I do know that if you click on it, you can change the name of the video to the loom video or whatever you want to call it, right? Um, you can also float over here to this down arrow and download the video. You can copy the video, make a duplicate. You can delete the video if you're unhappy with it. And you can share it. So if you click share, you can send it to Twitter, Facebook, Gmail. You can get the link. Um, there's also an option to create a folder. So if 
you get really into making loom videos for your students, maybe you're making them every week and you start making like 50 videos, maybe you're going to want to click to move to folder and create a new folder called, I don't know, unit one loom videos. And maybe you're going to want to organize them by folder, but again, you don't have to right here on the right hand side, it says edit your video. There's some other options. One of them is settings and it allows you to um, shut off comments. So maybe you don't want students to be able to comment, shut it off or turn it on. Um, it allows you to change some other minor things like adding a certain type of thumbnail emoji reactions. If you want your students to, to put a thumbs up, they can do that. Uh, allowing viewers to download it. Just things that are probably not that important. There is something called a call to action that you can add to the video. So if you click on it, a call to action is basically a link that you can add to the video. So let's say I wanted to add a link to my uh, web page. So I might say, click here for the school website. And I would put chsd218.org as the URL, I could change the color to red. And basically if you do that, what it does is in your video, it adds this little hovering link. And then if somebody clicks there, guess what? So in this case, I made a link to the school website and it's again embedded floating here in my video. And it's there if you want it to be. If you don't want to have one, you can hit edit CTA and you can down here, delete it. But again, what's cool about that call to action, which is right here, is that it allows you to add a link to your email. It allows you to add a link to your school webpage, or it allows you to send uh, a link to your students to something they might need to see. It's just a cool little pop-up. And then right here, is a button called trim. So if you've ever made a video, you know that there's always that awkward moment in the beginning where you're just kind of like shuffling around and then there's an awkward moment at the end where you're trying to turn off the video. So this allows you to trim certain parts of the video that you might not want. So I'm going to click start trimming and you can adjust with these red flags parts of the video that you want to trim. So let's say, uh, I don't know, from the eight second to the mm, 23 seconds. So from eight seconds to 23 seconds, this part here, I wanna clip it, I wanna get rid of it. You can adjust it exactly the way you want it. You could also move the flags. Then you hit this scissors icon, click it. You remove it. And then you hit publish changes. And it'll take some time to load. It'll show you this little dog, but Eventually, it will clip that part out of your video altogether. One last thing I want to talk about is right up here, it says personal library. So we are going to click on it. Now, you can also get to this page by going to the little loom icon in the top right and clicking this play button. Um, that will bring you to the same page, okay? We are now at our personal library. This allows you to adjust some uh, of your videos. You can see the videos that I've recorded. They're here. If you record 50 Loom videos, maybe one per week or two per week for your students, all of them will be here. And up here, you can also see your folders. And if you do like folders, you can just take your videos, click on them and drag them into the folder. Again, click on them, drag them into the folder. And it's that easy to use folders. And if you pick new folder up here and you click on it, you can make another unit two video. You can make another new folder. Now there's one other option that says new public folder. And that basically allows you to make a folder full of videos for other people to see. Now, normal folders are for your personal organization. A public folder is for the organization of videos for other people. So let's say that you want to make a collection of videos for your students. Um, you could make chemical reaction videos. And this public folder with the little icon faces on it 
is for other people to see. Again, on the left-hand side, you can see your folders here. And then archived is just the things that you have deleted, the videos that you have deleted. Now, I am going to go find one of the videos that I made right here, the Loom video. This is the video that I made a few minutes ago. Now, I showed you all of these options. I showed you that once a video is done, you can copy the link and then give the link to your students. I showed you all of these options to edit the video. But I want to make one thing abundantly clear. If you leave the settings the way they are, if you never touch all of these options, that is totally fine. Maybe you don't want to be some extreme loom expert adjusting every detail. That's fine. If you just leave everything the way it is, loom will still make awesome videos for you the way it is. All of the default settings are great. So don't be overwhelmed with all of these details. It's actually extremely easy to use. And since it's so easy to use, I want to remind you exactly how to make a loom video again, one last time. So again, when you click on your loom app, it will show up in the top right here in this little pinwheel icon. So we're going to click it. We are going to probably choose screen and cam so that again, there I am in the bottom left so that we can record both our face and the screen. We are also going to determine whether we want to record the entire screen or just a particular window. And then you just hit start recording. It will give you a countdown and then you can put anything on the screen that you want. If you want to show your students a PowerPoint video and lecture to them and talk to them, you can do that. If you want to pick the draw tool and highlight certain things within the video and say, Hey, I want to, you know, draw your attention to this concept. You can do that. It's a really easy thing to do. And then finally, when you're done recording, hit that red button, that stop recording button, and it immediately brings you to your completed video. And if you are happy with the way your video looks, you can play it back to make sure it looks the way you want it to. And then, and then of course, if you're happy with it, you can copy the link, send it to your students, put it on Google Classroom, and that is literally all you need to do. But again, if you want to go back in the video and see some other options about how to edit the video or how to go through your personal library of videos, those are also options. So that is loom i encourage you guys to use it try it out i promise it's extremely easy to use and hopefully your videos will be this much better because you'll be able to talk directly to the screen your students will be able to see you you'll be able to go through any kind of notes you want and um, hopefully it'll make distance learning a little easier and a little less awkward because students will see videos with you in them so again please try out loom uh, it's super easy and I hope this has helped you out. See you next time.